Hi everybody and welcome. We're at Neon Desert Music Festival 2018. This is Tony Hachar at the drive-in. Uh, How are you? Doing good. It's been forever. Just too many years. Too many years. We, we actually go way back. You know, the band of the guys. Homegrown El Paso guys. So what did you do? Actually, can I get you? You're really good. <laughs> Um, Thank you. Just, you know, I've been living in LA since that time. Thank you. Originally, we, we all moved there, and I, I'm the only one that kind of never left. And uh, yeah, I mean, there I uh, do a lot of music. I do a lot of composing for movie trailers and video games. Uh, my wife and I run a company that helps children with special needs. Also, that is called Smile and Wonder. And uh, it's uh, it's really exciting. It's grown. It's grown tremendously in the past five six years. And so it's it's a great way to give back for us and stuff like that and uh, and just good to be back in town. You know, we were here May fifth actually of last year for our record release. That's right. And uh, it's really nice to uh, you know be back and be with family. We would be with family and having played played the songs now yes. played once. You know? Yes, yes. And then <laughs> yeah. friends, I missed you guys. I was in Austin when you guys came in. Yeah. And then I believe I came back and then you guys were playing Austin later. Yes. So it was just one of those. One of those. But. Uh, so coming back to El Paso, it's been a year. What is the one place that you have to go? There used to be a long list for me. It was, you know, it was LJ, it was uh, Charcoaler, and it was Whataburger, of course. But now I, I've been eating vegan for a few years, so oh, wow. I, so now I now I just go. Uh, I guess I will grab some fries somewhere. <laughs> That's hilarious. And, and for me, like thank God for Whole Foods, and thank God for. I forget the name, there's one, oh, this is a great looking spot somewhere in this area. Oh, the Savage Garden. Yes. Savage Goods. Savage Goods. Good. Savage Garden. Uh, my knees is calling. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so I, it's, you know, I love that El Paso has it. something I can do. Yes, yes, yeah. definitely. Well, it's definitely making a, a, come, a comeback here. Oh, yeah. El Paso has been 20 years behind the scene, right? But all in, in, in good fashion, you know, it's exciting that you know, they've worked so hard to have me on here. And now that it's gone through all these years, it's getting better and better. It's exciting, like even though I don't live here anymore, it's exciting for me to see the city thriving in that way. And you know, I'm not participating, but I, my the only participation we have per se is that we're still able to play around here. So it's great. Well, it's you guys created the music here. And that's where it was. Yes. It's had a special place in the world. And as you look back in retrospective, like. What goes through your mind? Family now, it's like almost two lifetimes ago. Right? Yeah. You know, it's like you know, when people ask me, you know, how things are going or how things have been. My main memory of El Paso is everyone trying to make this music community happen. You know, we, uh, you know, I met some of the guys I play with now, and we were all playing in different bands. I was playing in a prog metal band, Paul, who was doing drag tones, and everyone was doing all these different scenes, but we all played together. And that doesn't really happen in other cities. But we were such a small, unique, little situation that, you know, it's it's exciting that that we still get to do it. And, and uh, it's also exciting that there's still people that have never stopped doing it. You know, we got, we got Joe Dorgan still killing it. We got stepping out, coming back. Yeah, it back? it's back. Okay. We're on uh, show Michelle. number 106. Yeah, congratulations. Sure. I'm, that makes me really happy because I mean, I used to sit, listen and be like, "Wow, who's this new band that I've never heard yes, of?" You know. Yes, and yes. Uh, to, unfortunately, we don't have those points in our life anymore because of all the technology. And you know, you hear about a band immediately. You know, and it's really that that was the most powerful part about music back then. Discovering, you know, discovering. Yes. You know, Going to a show. for me, I, I grew up on metal originally, so. You know, so for me it was like you know metal shop and all those, and then it was stepping out. And it was just so it was exciting that that stuff, at least some of it, is coming back and, and showing you. Um, when we used to hang out back in the day, there was a lot of places that we used to go to. What was one of the best shows that you remember, like from Campus Queen, or the dance, those days that you ever played in? Yeah, so I mean, I, I never got to, I never, I never got to uh, play the dance. You know what I want? I, I got to play the dance like maybe once. For me, it was camp, you know, it was Campus Queen, and then it became something. I the name of the after. But that's when I was starting to play more. I, I kind of played a lot of catch up because when the guys were, um, when the guys were, um, you know, 
playing shows. I was kind of playing catch up. My mom had passed away, so literally uh, May 25th, uh, 30 years ago. So yesterday, 30 years ago. And I was playing drums for a bit, and I stopped when she passed away. And I couldn't touch, I just didn't do anything. And so, um, and so for me to play a day after 30 years of her passing, Play another another place, and it all lines up to all the, the places that you kept screaming the dance. One on one, because back then when you played one on one, you were like, I I think I made it, you know? Yes, right. <laughs> and uh, and, uh, and so and, and and so that all that stuff is very exciting, to me. and uh, it puts a special place in my heart because it's, it was a lot of things. To me, uh, getting over a big lump uh, in my life from my mom passing, and then trying to play catch up when all my friends were playing shows since they were 13. I didn't really start until I was almost 18. So, yeah, you were a latecomer. Yeah, I was a latecomer, but I was just like, but I'm going to work harder than everyone. Well, look at you that now. Goal, look you know? at you now. And uh, well, thank you. But, uh, <laughs> you know, that was my goal just to kind of play catch up right. and uh, be able to play with these guys. Tell me about the album. It's been a year since. Now, yeah. and how's it going? What, what's the future plan here? The, the, the record went great. People, even people that didn't hear the record, I just spoke the start there, okay. they still comment on social media that, oh my god, they can handle being back to back with the oldest of all songs. And that's what you want. We wanted to write, write a record that was progressive for us, but still had the vibe. For it. And then we let our EP last November called A Diamond Bit that has uh, three songs. And so we have not stopped creating music in these two years. And then by the end of this cycle, we're doing South America in November. And then, and then we're done. We're officially done for a long needed break. And we're still having a great time. Um, everything's just great. I, I, you know, it's, a, it's, it's a blessing that everything's still like, really fine. Well, I'm really excited to see you guys today. It's been, last time I saw you guys was in Portland. I was living out there. Bad Jack Theater. It's been yes. forever, man. I'm telling you, it's been it's been many many a moon. Yeah. But uh, so I'm really stoked about tonight's show, and it's good to see you. Great to see you. And we'll hang out later. Yeah. Good to see you. Good to see you. Love you.